guys it's danny or just danny as in just danny sitting in the corner of her room doing her makeup and talking about a bunch of weird stories that she could talk about forever because i'm obsessed with what i'm about to do so today this is a little intro video on myself and like the goals i have for this channel i feel like you guys have to get to know the person that's telling you the stories before you just listen to the stories so while i'm doing my intro i'll just get into doing my makeup and then i'll break it down for you and then we can get into our story later so my name is danielle henry people call me danny I shouldn't, I don't know why I told you about my last name, but like now we're closer. My name is Danielle Henry, you can call me Danny. And I'm obsessed with true crime. I've been watching true crime since I was 14. And the first serial killer I've ever remember like, being obsessed with when I learned about him was Jeffrey Dahmer. Because I heard about him in a Katy Perry song. And as soon as I heard about Jeffrey Dahmer and the fact that he ate people's hearts, I was like, there's people in this world that are like that. And ever since then, an obsession with serial killers, like, just stuck. I watched true crime every single day. I probably watched every horror movie in the Netflix section. So I feel like I'd be perfect for this because I've been watching true crime for years and years and years. I know multiple serial killers. My friend, like, I am basically a serial killer in psych encyclopedia. But don't call me creepy, okay? So before we get started in this video, I just want to explain what I'll be doing on my channel and why you should tune in if you wanted to tune in. And I'll just be talking about true crime and beating my face. I'm a no voice makeup doer, wouldn't even call myself a makeup artist. I love doing makeup, it's a way to express myself. And I have loads of makeup just sitting here since quarantine. And I'm just like, let me just do it and get it over with. Because I've been wanting to do this and I'm super passionate about it. I'm super passionate about true crime. I could sit through a bunch of documentaries talking about serial killers. And I'm also in university for criminology. So I feel, feel like all of my past experiences line up together perfectly. Like this is everything. Like this is my personality. I love crime. I love the criminal justice system. I love... I don't love serial killers. But I love reading about them. Serial killers are creepy. Don't be one, don't do it, don't look at people's feet, don't cut off people's heads, don't do stuff with people's heads. So I'm just gonna get into it, but first I'm gonna find my eyebrow gel to start my makeup. And we'll be talking about, um, I think it's a nursery rhyme, but a lot of people don't know that it's based on a true story. So let's just, I haven't even finished introducing myself. I'm Danny. I'm 19, I'm a university student who is obsessed with true crime, who lives in Toronto. That's my story. I'll be right back. If I'm being completely honest, filming is hard and awkward and a lot. It's a lot to get used to talking to a camera. It's my first time filming a YouTube video. I'm very new at it. So if I, I just don't want to appear fake to the camera, that's the biggest thing I want to avoid. I want to be as real as possible with you guys. My personality is kind of quirky, but then I could sound kind of monotone and I laugh a lot when I get nervous and I don't want you guys to think that I'm laughing at the stories I'm telling ever on this channel. I don't find any of the stories I'm telling funny, but I laugh as a way to cope with very messed up things, which I will be talking about on this channel. I honestly, the list of the stories I can tell is never ending because like I'm extremely passionate about true crime. I I have a whole list in my phone and there's at least 200 people. I have never ending stories to tell you guys. And I just want you to know that if I laugh and if I'm quirky, quirky or funny, <laughs> if I cope with messed up things using hum humor, don't think I'm laughing at the victims or the situation or glorifying serial killers at all. Don't do that. Cut it out. So today we'll be talking about the serial killer who it inspired the infamous nursery rhyme the muffin man we all know the song called the muffin man we sung it growing up we sung it in kindergarten and it's so messed up that little kids are singing this song and have no idea what they're singing about this is also the first serial killer known documented in english history and although there's not a lot of proof that he existed but like it's 50 50 it's an urban myth I'm, I'm gonna talk about urban myths, I'm gonna talk about Slenderman, I'm gonna talk about everything that I find cool, but 
he was a serial killer that existed during the English Renaissance period. Frederick Thomas Linwood was a baker born in the year of 1563 during the periods of the English Renaissance. Frederick Linwood was born in Yorkshire, England. I think I'm saying that correct. Yorkshire or Yorkshire, England. And he was a baker. And during this time, it was extremely popular for... Do you know a milkman in America? How they deliver milk every single morning or every week, however that works. And you just wake up in the morning and you see like a carton of milk outside your door in America. Well, in England during this period, there were people called the Muffin Man who would deliver English muffins every single morning for breakfast or their daily meals. It was a daily thing. Bakers would have to work all day to deliver um, English muffins to the people of Yorkshire or just around England during the English Renaissance. It was known that during this period, a lot of people did not have anyone working for them. It was during an extremely hard time for some workers. Some people couldn't afford to feed their staff or like their families. It was a very hard period. People were suffering, people were dying. Only the rich people and the middle class people could really afford um, like luxuries of life. A lot of people were the workers who had to deal with everything else so uh frederick he owned a bakery and he worked by himself because he didn't he couldn't afford money to pay staff he was a hard-working person i'd give him that he was a hard-working person he baked his muffins he loved it um a lot of people would criticize linwood's baking because a lot of the times he'd have to bake pastries with his arms and legs to double the productivity. Because back then, remember, no one was working for him. He had to deliver muffins every single morning and it was hard. People would easily criticize him. And a lot of the cool thing I like about serial killer stories is a lot of the serial killers are people that have been victimized in some way by society. And like when they do horrible things, it's like a breaking point from all of the harsh treatments they've like received. And I'm not saying that to justify anything, anything they've done because they've hurt so many people and left a lot of families traumatized. But I feel like that's an interesting synchronicity between all serial killer stories because they all line up. They all were mistreated by the society they lived in. So Frederick would deliver muffins throughout his community, but everybody hated it. They they said it tasted bad. His muffins were bad. His bakery was bad. And this angered Frederick because people would constantly ridicule him. They'd make fun of him and he was kind of the joke in Yorkshire. I'll be right back. I'm going to finish my eyebrows because I feel like this is taking too long. And I'm already like one third into the story because it's a shorter story because I wanted to make an intro type video, but I'll be right back. I honestly just outlined them and then brushed them up with eyebrow gel. I'm pretty sure everyone does their eyebrows like this now because those boxy concealed eyebrows are a little too much sometimes. Not like bad too much, just too hard for me to do right now. I pull off both. I try to change up my makeup looks as much as possible. But for right now, we're going to go with an easier look so I don't spend half the video doing my eyebrows. So I also forgot to mention, during this period, bakers baked all day. Like, it was, they, they'd wake up in the morning and bake until 11. And the only times they'd get to sleep was during the periods where they'd have the, like, let the dough rise. So I'm assuming they'd finish baking at like kneading the dough at 11 and wake up at like 4 a.m. to bake the pastries in order to deliver it to the people of England because this was very high demand. And remember, Frederick's pastries were horrible. And back then there were frequent muffin men in England. So Frederick, he wasn't, yes, it was in high demand, but he wasn't like his pastries suck muffin men are everywhere like people didn't rely on frederick that much and this made him mad because he's not making any money he's broke these people are taking his coin and frederick did not like that frederick did not like that at all so it is said that before 
Frederick reached his snapping point, he was very jealous of the bakers that lived in his town. They were easily making more money than him. People liked their food way more than Frederick's. I'm sorry, you have to focus when you're doing your eyeliner. Especially white eyeliner, it's so easy to mess up. Give me a sec. <laughs> oh look at that <laughs> so can you guys guess the makeup look i'm going on based on the outfit that i'm wearing you'll see it's coming so frederick was very jealous of the people that worked in his town and he grew resentful of the bakers that were taking away his livelihood from him one second I'm just gonna cut. <laughs> like, we're back. Okay, in my next videos, I'm not planning to cut as much as I'm doing now. I'm doing like a little zebra look. I don't wanna like zoom too much on my face. But in my next videos, I won't cut as much. Today is just a very short video because I just wanted to give you guys a taste of like what I am gonna do on my channel. Like this is a very short story and it's like folklore slash re like people don't know if it's real or not. And there's not a lot of like evidence. Like in my next videos, I'll have like receipts and interviews and crime scene photos of real like serial killers and like the stuff they have done. But today is just like a little taste of like what I have to offer again. I'm gonna try to do <laughs> white on this line while talking about what frederick did because boy oh boy did frederick do so after growing resentful of the bakers in yorkshire england frederick had the fine idea to just murder them it is rumored that frederick murdered seven bakers in his town because he's jealous of them and he was angry that they were taking his bread not his bread that he was baking because it wasn't good but the bread that he was making off his bread if that makes sense the money he was making off of the bread that he was baking is what the bakers were taking away from frederick and then frederick decided to just or paddle 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 them because his murder weapon was a wooden spoon it isn't proven how Frederick killed all these people with a wooden spoon. The story remains, Frederick murdered all those people with a wooden spoon. That's the end of the story. Frederick killed all those people and he just took a wooden spoon and whacked them in the side of the head. I'm not, I don't know if it was the side of the head, but I know that his murder weapon was apparently a wooden spoon. And I'm just giving you the information as I have gathered, gathered it within my notes. So don't come for me and ask me how Frederick killed those people with a kitchen utensil because i don't know but then again john wick killed some people with some pencils so anything's possible thank god i have whatever this is it's like a makeup remover that's also eyeliner so it's good i think it's a makeup array i don't know what it's called i don't know what it's called i got it from minnesota i got all my eyeliners from the beauty supply store at my house so it's not like can't plug you guys on that one but i feel like I, you guys should just watch me fix it because you couldn't watch me mess it up that bad uh thank god it got a little messy but i'm just gonna salvage it real quick i think if you take it in a lot of children's songs are based on creepy stuff like i don't even want to tell you guys what ring around the rosie is based on because i'm pretty sure it's based on nazis but I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, it's not that bad. It's not even like I'm the one that's doing bad. It's my eyeliner that sucks. Like this eyeliner is so bad. You no know when makeup drags, like it doesn't glide on smoothly. Like you constantly have to just be like to get any form of like pigmentation. That's the exact same thing that's happening with this white eyeliner. I kind of fixed it i'll just be right back when i look presentable enough to keep going. okay i think i salvaged my salvage i think i salvaged it enough to keep going but another weird thing about frederick frederick linwood after he murdered those seven innocent bakers he was like nah this is not enough this is not enough his, his taste for blood was un unnerving so 
I'll be using the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation which I have used to the full capacity that it can go with my dirty brushes. But Baker's did not quench Frederick's thirst and so did me not putting on I just took it and I did not put on primer. That is great. That's awesome. I love the fact that I have acne. I love it. I love that fact. I just do a little light beat. And once again, I'm using my phone as a, um, a frame of reference and not my vanity mirror, which is right in front of me because I want to give you guys all my attention. And I know you guys might be frustrated because of the fact that I'm not telling you guys the story. But anyways, Frederick had this thing about him where after he delivered um english muffins to the families he would tie a muffin up to the string he would tie a muffin after he delivered muffins to families this is after he killed the bakers he would tie strings to muffins and lure children to his house or bakery I didn't get a specific in, like specific information on that one, but I just know that he would tie muffins to strings. Okay, I just noticed that I said tying muffins to strings, which isn't possible. I meant tying strings to muffins and then pulling it. And just pull it and just draw kids to his house. Like he just pull it and just slowly lure them there. And while he got, when he got the children to his house, he would knock them out and torture them. Like he got off on torturing little kids and then he would murder them. I don't know what he did with his bodies, but Frederick just gives me some cannibalistic vibes, man. I feel like he ate them. I don't know why, but I just feel like he ate them or put them in his buns for extra yeast or something. I don't know, but I don't know. I get bad vibes from that guy, but like, yeah, he's a serial killer, but I just get cannibal vibes from him. I think he decided to kill the kids because they would make fun of him a lot because remember i told you everyone would ridicule him like people made fun of him like crazy and i feel like at that point he just snapped and he was like if you're about to talk talk bad about me i'm just gonna kill you and put you in my buns that's the end of the story but yeah he killed 15 kids and seven bakers and at the end of his wild rampage he gained himself the name as the jury lane dicer and muffin man and the cool thing is the the song the muffin man was created in order to warn children from going to jury lane because they would get snatched up by frederick i don't know why he did it because he just he, he doesn't give me exact serial killer vibes because i've read about like hundreds of serial killers he just gave he just gives me a man that is scorned like, he was so mad about people just, like, doing the worst to him that one day he finally just snapped and decided to kill all those people, and that's horrible. And it also goes to show of, like, how you treat people in society. Like, I feel like us as a society, we're so mean to each other, and we say such horrible things about each other, and it sucks because no one deserves that, and Frederick honestly was a victim to this. And another thing, like, in a lot of the stories I'm going to tell you, you're going to see that a lot of the people, a lot of the serial killers that you call monsters, were bullied horrendously or went through a horrible life. So it makes sense how they got led down to a path of crime because people are not the nicest. And then when other people snap, they like to turn around and go, oh my God. But you made Frederick kill people. You guys are so mean to him. Once again, not defending serial killers at all. I'm just saying, if we were nicer to each other, maybe Frederick wouldn't have snapped and murdered all those people. Once again, honestly, rest in peace to all those people involved. If, like, it was real, I'm going to do my lips and my eye. No, I'm going to put on my lashes. And then I'm going to do my lips on camera. Okay, so that sums up the story of Frederick Linwood, a.k.a. the Muffin Man. The man that would drag kids to his bakery or home and kill them, torture them, probably eat them. Because I'm pretty sure he did eat them. 
but I'm just gonna do my lashes and then come back on screen and do my lips and then tell you guys more about what I plan to do with this channel because I, there's so much stuff. I'm so excited. This is my first video and this is the lightest one, but I don't know. I'm just very excited. I'm very excited to get this done. By the way, Frederick didn't get arrested because I didn't find any arrest records. I just know as he got older, he suffered from dementia and started making pastries based on like murderous i think let me check my notes when he got older he started suffering from dementia and he had a sense of humor this one because he started to name his pastries after very suspicious things like the arsenic apple and the flaming frere i don't know but i feel like his little his guilt was kicking in back then but i'll be right back i'm hungry Little quick intermission. And the dad did something. Okay, I have my eyelashes on. They're a little much. They're these are simply performative. I have real eyelashes that I can't find right now. So I had to put these on, which are very long. I know. Don't really wear them that much anymore, but eyelashes just complete the look. So now I'm just gonna do my lips and talk about why I started this channel and like what I aim to do with it. And another like the main reason I started this channel is because I'm an only child. I just so lonely sometimes. And over quarantine, I've just been aching to find a way to make my mark in this world. And I've been sending, okay, I'm just gonna shut up for a sec. <laughs> Another thing I like to do that Megan Thee Stallion may have put me on is my cupid bow goes down, but I just drag my like pencil straight across it. Like I don't draw my lips based on my cupid's bow because my lips appear fuller if I... Okay. So over quarantine, I've just been finding a way to make my mark in this world and to do something that inspires me and motivates me. And I was just trying to find out like what is a constant in my life that I don't get bored with and I get excited every time I think about it. And I was like, true crime. I've been watching true crime for so long and you can't get bored of it because it is so different but similar and cool and like you can analyze it and find multiple different things i don't know i feel like true crime is the coolest thing in the whole world and telling stories and trying to find lessons out of every story even trying to figure out a way how we could have saved them is very cool for me because a lot of the time it's societal aspects that do affect these people and turn them into monsters which i don't like referring to people as monsters but some people have done some really messed up things in this world and i feel like they've gained that title Okay, I feel like I've made all the changes in my power to make. So I feel like I should just end off this video and say if you guys made it to this point, thank you endlessly. It means the world to me because this is something I'm extremely passionate about. And I just like, I want to get my stuff together. I want to get better at conveying the story. I want to get better at the imagery. So just take steps with me because I'm, this is my first video and I'm only going to learn from experience and like doing it again and again and again. And trust me, I'm so determined towards this. And if you guys enjoy this video, please let me know. Please let me know if you guys have any like serial killers or um, urban myths that you're interested in. And I will gladly tell them. I will sit here for as long as I have to to tell you guys these stories. Thank you so much for subscribing or liking 
or even just watching the video i'm grateful for everything and anyone who likes what i have to say and likes what i have to produce and put out into this world thank you guys endlessly again post for halloween so i'm trying to find this cool story to tell on halloween i don't know if i should tell like a urban myth or a serial killer story i feel like i'm leaning towards a serial killer story but like super heavy like horror serial killer story which i'm kind of excited about thank you guys so much for watching and just stay tuned and i'll see you guys again later bye